12th installment in the franchise, Halloween Kills. It's somewhat of a decent film. It doesn't break ground. It doesn't do anything new here. But it is entertaining for what it is. But I just won't go out and say this is a better movie than the 2018 film. But if, if you're a fan of this franchise, then you owe it to yourself to check it out. Once again, directed by David Gordon Green, this film takes place on the same night of Halloween 2018. And so Michael Myers, when the firemen show up, he slaughters them, he continues his hunt for a glory stroll. And you know, watching this film, I realized that this movie, as interesting as the performances was of the main cast and the creative kills, they're very brutal in my head. This really didn't add anything new to this franchise. Yes, the man who had played Michael Myers, James, Drew, Courtney, he was menacing and he was much of a threat in this film, obviously. But you know, the main story is the people of Haddonfield, Illinois, had enough of Michael Myers. But Tommy Doyle brings a mob together with his friend Lindsay Wallace, the two children that was in the original 1978 film. And together, they all chant, Evil Dies Tonight. And so they're on this mentality to stop Michael Myers. This film also showed the dangers of mob mentality. And there obviously are some consequences to that in this film. And I like how they really did that. We had never seen that before. Only like a small portion of it in Halloween 4. It certainly was something interesting to say the least to see in this film. I will say that this film was interesting for what it was. Especially how it ended. But... I didn't really like how Jamie Lee Curtis is put in the background of her own movie. I mean, she doesn't play a big role in this film compared to the 2018 movie, but I would like to see more from her. But, you know, hats off to Drew Greer. She was good, actually, as Karen Neeson. And not just that, though. Then you have the actress that played Allison. She was good as well. But I would like to see more backstory. Not just from Michael Myers, per se, but Tommy Doyle, Lindsay Wallace, what they've been up to for all these years. In fact, the actress that plays Lindsay Wallace was the same one that played her in the original film, Kyle Richards, so I thought that was pretty cool. But, you know, they had minor roles in this film. More so, Lindsay Wallace. I mean, Tommy Doyle had more screen time than Lindsay Wallace, and I wish we would have gotten a decent amount of screen time between the two. But nonetheless, though, this movie is not bad, but I want to say it's one of the best horror films in the franchise. And at the end of the day, I believe this film will have people that enjoy this film and others that despise it. There's a reason this film is called Halloween Kills. There are a lot of brutal and gruesome kills by Michael Myers in this movie. I mean, dudes kills more people in this film than he did in the 2018 movie. And not just that, though, but having Kyle Richards returns, it was cool to see. And this time, Tommy Doe was played by Anthony Michael Hall. They couldn't get Brian Andrews. I guess the guy's retired. I'm not sure. But and they also got the doctor from the original Halloween film, Marion Chambers. You know, that's her character name. And not just that, though, but I really felt like this film, as decent as it was, it could have broke new ground. I just wish it did something new, but we didn't get that. And we see the mob mentality in this film. They're trying to hunt Michael Myers down. And, well, let's just say I'm now interested to see how Halloween ends, comes to the finality of this whole thing. You know, the story between Lori Stroll and Michael Myers. We have seen it for over four years now. And in this new timeline, it just adds more to the franchise. Man, I don't know what else to say, but this film, it does have a little plot pace in there, but as far as the slasher film, it's not one of the worst I've seen, but I wouldn't say it's spectacular either. I'm getting this film a 7 out of 10. I found this slasher film pretty decent for what it was. Once again, it's not better than the 2018 film here, but I wanted to see exactly what Tommy Doyle and Lindsay Wallace been up to for those four years. I mean, we actually get a flashback to Michael Myers to the night of 1978, and it does add some depth, but it doesn't add anything more than that. And not just that, though, but I enjoy Michael Myers' mask in this film. It looked all burnt up, and when he's coming out of that house, wow, 
What a great shot that was, you know. I also enjoyed the music in this film real well. I liked the update Halloween theme. It was done real nicely. I enjoyed the Easter eggs in this film, such as, you know, the three masks from Halloween 3. Nonetheless, though, this film is intriguing for what it is. It's just that I would like the screenplay to be a little stronger. I mean, Dave McBride had wrote in the script for this film um, with two other people. This is like the middle chapter before the finale of these trilogy of films. But I will say this film is thankfully not Halloween 5. And that's my review of Halloween Kills. Okay, leave your comments down below in the section. And let me know what you think about this film if you have seen it. And are you looking forward to Halloween Ends, which comes out next year? Alright, this is Slum Guy 172 saying... Peace out.